Holler if you hear me, and welcome to this edition of Loot Targets. So Eric July's ISOM number two has passed $1.8 million in pre-orders with plenty of time left for him to get that campaign to pass or get closer to the $3.7 million precedent of his first campaign. This unprecedented success in the independent comics of the social media age is anything but something to ignore or to shake a stick at, and that goes quadruple for the lack of Eric July coverage on comic book resources. When with spin-off titles for the Ripperverse characters like Alpha Core or Yaria, one of which is going to be written by comic profession and actual comic icon Chuck Dixon, all of that coming on the way, well, there is no stopping Eric July. And now the Ripper is coming to the San Diego Comic-Con this month in the last weekend of July, as it's been happening there for a while. And uh, all of this, all of the fun, all of the success of the Ripperverse is coming with them. Yes, yes, yes. Eric July is coming to town if you are there in San Diego. Yes, remember that. He's better than Santa Claus and bigger than Santa Claus, I would say. And by that, I mean popularity, not girth, since Eric July actually is in shape. He may be bearded, but he's not repulsively obese. So there is one stereotype of the people in the whole online comic book intelligentsia or community or whatever that he does not fulfill. They can't all be as immune to those kind of stereotypes as me being in shape with a full head of hair and clean shaven. But that is neither here nor there. What is going to be there at San Diego Comic-Con is one big booth and even a planned Q&A session for Eric July right there. And with all of the major studios dropping out of Comic-Con because of the writer's strike and the impending Screen Actors Guild strike, they have no wares by which to pro take the San Diego Comic-Con and continue turning it into a glorified promotional tool for Hollywood instead of it being a convention for comics. Now that there is a major, major selling point for attending the convention that actually involves the comic book industry in some way or another, this is something that is very much a good thing for the people over there that have been running the convention. And how is the online comic book intelligentsia outside of the realm of July's friends uh, reacting? trying to get a black man thrown out of a public appearance through lying about him because comics gate bad. Even though July is not in the movement at all, he is his own person, He, you only have to go and just buy the most tenuous uh, claims to try and make him is part of the CG movement. When he is not, he did not come into this as a professional who was ousted from the mainstream industry for the crime of wearing the wrong colored hat after November 4th, 2016 and making Heather Antos and her Whisper Network angry. No, it wasn't that. It wasn't of him being an aspiring creator who wanted to get into the business and saw the opportunity, the precedent that him or your boy Zach had set up online through crowdfunding and through a YouTube, being a YouTube personality. No, he was his own successful person as a YouTube personality and as a metalcore frontman before then and put his own money behind his project to get it started. Something that further separates him away from CG, but something about the Comscape movement that people, interestingly, those types on the far left on Twitter don't ever talk about, don't ever criticize them for, something that actually involves understanding, studying, and watching their practices, is to notice that especially the biggest ones in there are the ones who were established professionals that worked for decades in the mainstream that are going and taking other people's money to do their projects instead of having that success, that precedent to their work and putting that towards getting their work off the ground with their own money. Instead, uh, they go to the crowdfunding campaigns, which crowdfunding is for the people who want these projects. They want to do these creative projects, because, but they don't have the income to fund them themselves. That's a question here or there that you notice they don't bring up because that might actually revolve around some legitimate criticism. I might hear some people here and there, but remember, these are the same people that also will criticize Eric July and tell him how to run his company when they're living above a thrift store or they're sleeping at a YMCA and they're a grown woman who was balding like Jeremy Piven was back in 1993. But that is another little bit of too much, too many facts to uh, have them interpret in their miserable little heads. 
And yes, in spite of July not being of the movement, the fact that he has come within five feet of either Van Skyver or Gary Beekler of Nerdrotic or the rest of the Geeks and Gamers crowd, the fact that he is a regular of the Geeks and Gamers streams, and since they stream about 47 times every two hours, you know that is an awful lot of time in their hands for somebody big coming on in. That is a big deal for them. But, of course, that's not going to stop them from looking at a man like him who comes to either Van Skyver's channel or to Geeks and Gamers or to Nerdrotic and doesn't threaten to blow either Van Skyver's face off like one of those noble, peaceful left-wing types like the comic book store retailer who threatened to do that to Van Skyver in the early days of Van Skyver's YouTube channel and the wake of him wearing a red hat on November 4th, 2016. But that guy got his karma. Van Skyver, in spite of all his arrogance, his picking fights with other YouTube personalities, the fact that he is increasingly unproductive on his promises with his projects, he still has his money coming in. He's still riding high. He can spend more time tweeting about $100 T-bone steaks he's having, going to ball games, going to concerts, than in actually getting his latest comic book done. But he's still prospering while that guy, his store got closed down. So, yeah, what was that final line that Joaquin Phoenix said in Joker to Robert De Niro before giving him the uh, chat, the BLM specials, I'd call it? Yeah, something along those lines. But what is it that they're doing? Oh, yeah. These same people who call about how open-minded they are, they have all the right uh, rainbow avatars on their social media during June. They have the gender pronouns. They have all the right platitudes that they get instructed to them by MSNBC. All these people who claim to be so anti-racist, what are they doing at the side of this black man who is living his life without uh, a Colbert monologue instructing him on how to think? Yeah, they are firing off every buzzword at him that they fire off at anybody who gets in the way of their agenda with an unusual amount of velocity being aimed at this black man, yes. But there is nothing to interpret from people who spend their whole day on social media virtue signaling, then suddenly being very apoplectic about a minority who's found success but does not live the way Trevor Noah's Twitter feed tells him to. There's nothing along those lines. There's nothing that could be misconstrued as something that fits in with how much they live to be devoted to fanatically defending Biden, the man who dropped multiple N-bombs to the face of black man Clarence Thomas on C-SPAN, or to a black voter telling him that you ain't black if you don't vote for me. Hmm. It almost all is of a picture, isn't it? It's all of, the, of one piece. It's almost like that one line from that one Upanishad about how we are like the spider. We weave our web and then we walk across it. That is how we live our lives. Something along those lines. But it, e, look at it. The noble anti-racists have made a day job out of badgering and slandering Eric July. All with the intensity that proves something us thinking people have been saying about them before the Ripa came along to become the living example of this. No one is more racist than someone who won't shut up about how they are anti-racist. July already did a noble deed and had a massive amount of success in defiance of the left, simply by proving the true racism that lives at the heart of the race-obsessed left wing. So visibly has this been confirmed that I have been smiling and smiling and smiling. That Gail Simone's and the Vida Ayala's dropping the other shoe on their views on the Mr. Hyde half of their mental imbalance appearing. Really, it wasn't a matter of if, but when would these people go from talking about how much that they support BLM, how much they hate this bigotry, then going around to threatening people in those minority groups uh, with a bat or trying to dox them for the punishment of not thinking like uh, a frost screeching her head off of, at the G4 network. Now, anybody with uh, a side shave substituting a personality is irrefutably a fanatical freak. That ans And it also answers the question as to why these people also fanatically defend Islam so much. The mutilation of women as part of an ideology and the women have to submit to it or else, either by more verbal means or by more actual physical violent means, not to mention the torturing and the execution in public for everyone to cheer of all non-believers because non-belief is worse than death. Do not accept the Christian as uh, your uh, ally because they are the enemy. Now you look upon those and it makes you ponder. 
even if you aren't a Christian, because there is nothing in Eric July's statements or in his YouTube channel on his Twitter feed where he goes on about the Bible in the way that a Doug Tenaple would. He's definitely not somebody who plasters the CG hashtag all over everything and spends nine hour long live streams with Aaron Lopresti over here, John Million over there, Billy Tucci down there, Dan Frag over there, with Rennie Draws, Rennie Draws, Rennie Draws, Rennie Draws, and oh wait, seven more nine hour live streams where it's Rennie Draws and Narwhal, Rennie Draws and Narwhal. But if you have anything that can be slightly interpreted as that, then, well, I would say that your life is in danger, and there are those who have had their health and safety threatened, to the point of even some like that umbrella guy where it's CG cross-pollinated with disproving the Me Too movement, where then those sociopaths that defend Amber Heard then go and try to get child protective services to steal your children away. So that's why, just remember... The more you live and prosper, the more they lose and brood, and it just reminds them how much of a loser they are. And that's not my opinion. I know I'm right. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Check that you're still subscribed. And don't forget to become a member today to support my channel or shop my art store with the second link below in the description where my posters are 200, color art is 30, pen and ink art is 25, sketchbooks are 25, and trading cards are 10. I have color commissions for 60, pen and ink commissions for 50, trading card commissions for 20, and any purchase or commission just has a $5 shipping and handling fee. And uh, you can also donate in my store. Donations, uh, any denomination around the world is accepted. And when you make that donation, that money goes immediately to me. But if you want to buy my work uh, or commission, but you live outside of America, my store can accept orders from foreign addresses. So you'd have to go and make your payment as a donation. Just donate the price of the item or items you want with another 25 US added on for the international shipping handling fee and your items will ship immediately. So I thank you and remember felines, slam it, lick it, suck it, and see you space cowboy.